I just don't know what to say. I'm sitting in a drapier with Eric, a friend of mine. We're becoming almost family. That's how much I connected with him. And this room that we're sitting in was built in the 12th century, before the Dark Ages, before Inquisitions. The world was at peace. And I guess somebody wanted to celebrate the world's peace, so they decided to build a champagne house. <laughs> so that's where Drapier came into the picture. I'm going to let Eric take you in to from the 12th century until 2019 into Brooklyn, New York. <laughs> that's a long journey. A brief, but can we do it like... Um, I mentioned uh, uh, Bernard de Clairvaux. Uh, who as a very important uh, person for Champagne, uh, who, who came from Burgundy in the 12th century, and is the one who built all this place. At this moment, um, there were the, the Comte de Champagne, who was, who was ruling the Champagne area, and there were the Dukes from Burgundy. And both were, uh, were uh, fighting for the king. And when uh, Bernard de Clairvaux moved from Burgundy to Champagne, a few years after that, the dukes from Burgundy decided to fight against the king. So it, it did help, actually, the Champagne area uh, uh, to, to develop as a wine-producing region because, of course, the king was not keen to drink wine from Burgundy anymore. He doesn't and drink his enemy's wine. Obviously. And so he was drinking more and more champagne wow. wines. So from war, something beautiful can come up. Yeah. Uh, so at the same period, the Bordeaux region was uh, managed by English. And it's at this moment that the French king managed to kick out the English out of Bordeaux and managed to get back the Aquitaine. So at this moment, he was so proud to be able to say that he kicked out the, the English from this from part Bordeaux. of France. So he, he was drinking only Bordeaux wines. He switched. And he switched. And then Champagne and, Bordeaux and Burgundy wines, or the fame dropped a little bit for several years, decades even, be, uh, on the profit because, because of... Because the Kardashians stopped drinking. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and it's really um, in the... Uh, 18th, 19th century, that uh, the the fame and the and the sh the wines from Champagne came back to be uh, uh, recognized as some of the best wine from from France. Wow. But at this time, it was still wines, because all the wines was harvested pretty late. We were pressing, getting some juice, and this juice we were putting it in barrels. You know, uh, Champagne, the, the nothing was existing. The area, ah, there was the no name, Champagne. The town. Usually, usually we were speaking about wines from Sillery, from Ay, from Bar sur Aube, from Urville. No, they, they, we were not mentioning it as a region. Uh, but in the area, we produce some red wine, some white wines. And so I come back to the process. It's very interesting to understand. From late harvest in October, we press the grapes, get some juice, put it in barrels. And something happened at that time. Nobody knew what was happening. And after a few months, from this juice, they were getting a wine. We know that it's yeast who transformed the sugar into alcohol and gas. But the gas ga went out. There were a tax, very important also to take into account. There were a tax on the, on the barrels. Every producer was paying a tax to the king. Then we were shipping those barrels and in a restaurant, bars, hotels, and the people there were putting the wines into bottles. And there were a second tax for the king on those bottles. Until 1728, in 1728, Louis XV wrote a decree saying only the wines from Champagne will be allowed to be transported in bottles. So what did he do? He generalized the bottling from the area, from Champagne, so rather than putting your juice into barrels, barrels we were putting, putting it in, bo in bottles. Why did he do that? Because we, we could avoid, for us, for us, it was a good point to avoid the tax on the barrels. Yes, but why did why he do did it? Why did he do that? Yeah. That's the very best question. 
it's because before 1728, the kings and the monks were allowed to have some bottles. Okay. So for two reasons, for a gift for himself and for la Marquise de Pompadour and, and for uh, the negociant from Champagne. Uh, the gift to himself was that he wanted to have this champagne. He was used to have this champagne into bo bottles in Versailles. He wanted to have his, the same champagne in the second house of La Marquise de Pompadour. And he didn't want to do it. So, he's no, yeah, that was, so he changed the whole he could, he could avoid a tax on the barrels. Why would the king pay a tax? For him. Yeah. And he used to probably order a lot because at Versailles, his whole, everybody was living there. We don't have uh, registrations, but I guess. So he wanted to have the champagne as simply as it was for him in Versailles, to have the same in Normandy where La Marquise de Pompadour was living. And there were a second... second and it was still still wines. It was still wines, still wines. Not sparkling. Uh, they didn't it was, that's, it's at this period that champagne was starting to get bubbles. But the first frame, first, the first proof of right and proof that we have about, about uh, champagne as a sparkling wine is from UK. The English was enjoying it. English were trying to reproduce the bottle, the, the bubble. In fact, when they were receiving the barrels, they were putting some spice in it, thinking that it would help to get some bubbles. In France, the first doctor of Louis XV was from Burgundy. Of course, at the time, they were considering wines as a medication. And so what do you mean? We still consider it as a medication. Ah. <laughs> well, that's what, um, what André would tell you. André is the father of Michel. So André is 92, uh, yeah. 92 years old. Mm -hmm. He would tell you that uh, his blood uh, tests are absolutely perfect today. And it's probably because he's drinking about one bottle of champagne a day. I guess we have something in common. <laughs> Can we... I'm just thirsty. Yeah, sure. Can you explain and help how to open a bottle of champagne? Of and course. then we'll go back. Of course. Why is the cap on the bottle? The cap is, um, is to retain the cork, of course. We, there is about uh, the, same, the same pressure than in a car tire into the bottle. Oh, so wow. It's uh, quite a lot. So now I block the, the cork with my hand and I turn the bottle. That's how you should do. So it's Slowly. like turning around the house when you're taking out a bulb. Exactly. <laughs> okay. And then I let it go out slowly. And here we are. How many bubbles are in the bottle again? The same, actually it's a very easy to remember. It's about the same uh, number as the French population. 50 to 60 million people. Oh, it's... 50 to 60 million people. Oh, that's so interesting. People. Cheers. Cheers. This is a part of the story that I was telling before with Louis XV. Louis XV, in 1728, write a decree because the negociant from Champagne was asking him, please let us send our bubbles, our Champagne sparkling bottles, up to UK. They enjoy it over there. In France, it was considered... It was not very well seen. It was seen as the wine of uh, a miracle was happening, but it was it could have been the miracle of the devil. There was the the the, 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 the doctors from Burgundy. They were saying that the the wines from Champagne are weak, so that's why they get some bubbles, and that's why you should never drink some. So he wrote a decree in 1728, and in 1729 have been created the very first Champagne house called Ruinard. In 1730, the second oldest champagne house, Chanoine, had been built. And the whole story of, of champagne as a sparkling wine could start right after this decree from Louis XV in 1728. And Louis XV was very famous to be enjoying champagne during big parties. Yeah. And that's what, why today still, uh, champagne is considered as the drink for celebrations. It's because of Louis XV. This, everything is linked. It's a long history wow. where champagne has always been connected to celebrations. Above all, champagne is a wine. Okay. So you should enjoy it exactly as you would do with any kind of wine, specifically a white wine, and 
consider that on top of any classic white, white wine, you have one more indication just looking at it, it's the bubble. And a good indication is to see how small is the bubble and how smooth and nice is uh, looking the, the foam on top of the glass. I smell um, green apples, maybe? Little peach? Very, this is very typical from a, from champagne, uh, apples, pear, uh, white peach, the, the white, white, white fruits, peach. white Light fruits in general, white in general. fruits. And um, there is ah, a nice story beside the, the, the label also, the color, it's André, the father of Michel, so 93 years old, he registered the label in 51 or 52. And he chose the color because of a tasting few um, weeks or months before he registered this label, some sommelier came and had a, a taste of the whole range. And they, they told to André that they, um, they realized that there were a link between all the champagne that they have drunk from Drapier, and it was Queen's Jelly, which skin is this color. And that's why we use Queen's Jelly. And the jelly. guy was like a big wine sommelier, like Robert Parker. Or yeah, something. it was. So Queen's Jelly as a link, so which is which does have um, a, a slight bitterness, which is typical from Drapier's taste. And we have always since the fifties, we have always focused on this little note of Queen's Jelly, because this is part of our terroir. This is part of our of our identity. I taste stars. The, one of my stars is called The Wine Cave. Mm -hmm. So it's in the cave with Eric, drinking wine from the cave with me from the wine cave. It could be worse. <laughs> <laughs> it could be worse. We, we're going to try the Brut Nature, which is probably the best answer to this question. Brut Nature is 100% uh, uh, drapier soul. It's 100% Pinot Noir, 100% from Urville. So when you try this Brut Nature, and no sugar added, when you try this champagne, you taste exactly what, what would be the answer from Drapier to how should be a good Pinot Noir from Champagne. So this is why Drapier was created, to use their own grapes, own way of making it, no sugar added, natural beauty and it has protein so you don't need to eat <laughs> absolutely <laughs> it's exactly it i'm just smiling being around these bottles it's the first time that i don't care about dust actually <laughs> <laughs> i love it i want to be part of the bottle and this is 1982. Wow. yeah older than you older than me <laughs> a year older than me it's true l'chaim and l'chaim there's so many champagne houses, but Drapier is way up top there. What is so special? Drapier, different from all these other champagne houses. I think the, the most important thing is that Drapier is, um, is following his own path. Drapier is not uh, trying to do as the other ones. Michel, it's a family that for eight generations has been working the same plots, the same way and always with the same idea of creating the greatest champagne, but always showing the quality from their own place, from their own terroir. I'm just drinking to see if the answers are correct, <laughs> not because I want to be <laughs> impolite. <laughs> and what do you think? I think you're right. <laughs> no, the beauty is that it, for so many generations, so it's not a business. Wine is art. Wine is not, you don't see the next year profits. It takes years and years and years. And, and I believe that the Drapier family are in it as, it's part of the tradition, it's part of who they are, it's part of their culture. So that's why they put in their heart and soul into the soil. Absolutely, it's, uh, every bottle uh, is uh, showing their name. So um, uh, they definitely want it this bottle it's to their represent signature. exactly they don't want the check to bounce exactly exactly the most important is that this bottle is repre representing them, them themselves wow 
I know that Drapier has a special way of not filtering when 98% or 99% of other champagne houses do filter. Can you explain me the process and why it's better? The idea is quite simple. In Drapier, we try to use the best raw material and then work it the less, the, 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 the less possible. Uh, there is always a selection in, in, the, uh, in the vineyards to pick the best grapes. Then we select again when the, the, the grapes arrive, we pick the best grape from what, what is arriving to the place. Then we press it different times we always use only the first press, which is always the best. So right at the beginning, there is about 20... What means the first press so people should understand? It's when you get a, a grape in your hand, press it, One and time. the juice that you get is exactly what we would call la cuvée. It's like you squeeze press. out an orange. Exactly. First squeeze, exactly. the best flavor. And then, so when the, 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 the grapes have been squeezed, we, mm, we move them, and then we, we press them again, stronger. This is the second press. The second press is called la taille. It's the, out of 4,000 kilo, we get 2,000 liters of the first press and 500 liters of the second press. We never use the second press in drapier. What Just to make sure that? we sell it or we distill it to make Marc de Champagne. Oh, and that's delicious too. Mm. So the idea is for our champagne, we want to use only the best raw material and then avoid every steps that can be avoided. When you press a Pinot Noir, the juice is white, the skin is black. If black you, or oh, pinkish? Well, yeah, pinkish, yeah. yeah. But so when you, when you press, when, you, when you do the harvest, you have to be very precise to make sure that you don't lose the, that you don't pick the color from the, from the skin. Mm. In that case, Anybody or most of the people in Champagne would have some uh, product to decolorize the, the, the juice which have been tinted. So you're saying that all grapes are the same color inside, just like human? Juice, ju yeah, exactly. In Champagne, we are allowed to decolorize. In Drapier, we would never decolorize a Champagne because if we get the color, so you're this allowed is to decolorize in champagne. I yeah. didn't know that. And filtration is the same. Uh, if you want to make sure that you don't get any trouble, any problems, whatever, you filtrate. If you filter your wine, you, y they get weak, but they uh, filtered. They don't get the, you. You don't keep the the, the the sickness, all the tr all the things that can bring some some troubles. We believe that you, you, you weak your wine, so you don't, we don't want that. We want our wines to be full, to be full-bodied. We want them to show a lot of flavors. So we would never filter our wines. Wow. I, I, I never thought I would say that, <laughs> but I want to be kidnapped in France, locked <laughs> in with you in this cave. <laughs> we have protein and we have champagne. Eric, yeah, cheers. it's been a pleasure. Yeah, my pleasure. And this is... I, I can't even, uh, I'm looking at the bottles. I'm not sure if they're smiling to me, <laughs> but I'm smiling to them. <laughs> Eric, living and breathing and smelling and tasting and sleeping drapier champagne. What is the tasting notes when I pour a glass of Pinot Noir drapier? So in the Brut Nature, Brut Nature, 100% Pinot Noir, uh, you have a taste of our terroir. Really, you don't drink any champagne. This is Terroir one champagne. Terroir means the earth. The earth. Uh, uh, the earth from our village. Yes. Our village is less than 200 people. So this is a taste from one single part from, from France. Wow. And then, so this taste is based on the Pinot Noir. It brings very nice white fruit flavors. Uh, we keep it brut nature, so no sugar added. So you can really feel all the flavors brought only from this Pinot Noir. So it's white, like white fruit, pears, white pears, white peach, peach uh, white flowers, blossoms. It smells so good. It's not your perfume. <laughs> no, no, it's not. It's really champagne. Lechaim. <laughs> Lechaim.